In this session, we shall discuss concepts such as interfaces, namespaces, and collections. So, session objectives for this session will be we'll describe what are interfaces, we'll discuss what are namespaces, and we'll discuss what are collections. Interfaces are similar to classes except that they have no implementation. Methods are only declared within interface and do not contain any code. An interface cannot be initiated. It is typically implemented by a class using the implements keyword. An interface is defined using the interface and interface keywords. So defining an interface will be interface, any name of the interface and interfaces. Implementing an interface, you can have a class, class name, in which you can write down implements and then the interface name what you have created. Or it could be interface, interface name, inherits another interface. So you can have inheritance performed in interfaces also. All the methods of an interface must be implemented by the class failing which a compiler error will result. So we'll see one example for creating and using interface. Here we have module M in which we have public interface I which has two methods declared. One is sub first, sub second and interface. As interface cannot have method implementation, you can only have method declarations. We have another class which is public class X. This class implements the interface I. So sub first implements I dot first. So we are implementing here method from interface I which prints implementation of first method. Sub second implements I dot second implementation of second method. Here we create an interface which has two method declarations. These methods do not contain any code or functionalities. The interface is implemented by a class X using the implements keyword. The class has an implementation for each of the two methods. Each method implementation is suffixed with an implements keyword, followed by the name of the interface method that is being implemented. These methods print appropriate messages on the console. A class cannot inherit from two other classes, but it can inherit a class and implement an interface. Multiple inheritance is not supported in VB.NET. However, it can be achieved with the help of interfaces. So we'll see one example which shows how multiple inheritance is achieved in VB.NET. We have module M, we have public interface I, which has a method declaration as public subtest. We have a class T, which has public subtesting as a method, which prints method testing. Another class, class X, it inherits from class T, plus it implements the interface I also. So subtest implements I dot test, it prints implemented method. So here a class is inheriting from two different things, one from a class and implementing in another interface. Inside main, we say dim y as new x, create object of the base derived class. We call y dot test and y dot testing through derived class object. So in the code shown, we create an interface I having a method declaration for method test. We then create a class T having a method testing. Next, a class called X is derived from class T using inherits keyword. Class X also implements the interface I using the implements keyword. Since X implements the method test of the interface, it must include the implements keyword. In submain and n sub block, we create object of type X and invoke methods test 
and testing respectively. In VP.NET, it is not possible for a class to implement more than one interface. Moving ahead, we come to namespaces. In VB.NET, class libraries are comprised of namespaces. Namespaces are used to organize nested entities such as other namespaces, classes, interfaces and so on. Namespaces take care on the way in which program elements are exposed to other programs with the help of various access modifiers. Modules and classes are generally put inside namespaces. One of the most commonly used namespace in VB.NET is system. A complete list of namespaces is given. We are now familiar with system.console.readline and system.console.writeline methods. These methods belong to the classes defined in system namespaces. In addition to using namespaces provided by Microsoft.NET Framework, we can also create user-defined namespaces. The syntax for a namespace will be namespace, any name you want to give, and end namespace. A namespace declaration consists of a keyword namespace followed by a qualified identifier that serves as the namespace name. Optional namespace member declarations are enclosed between namespace and end namespace keyword. Now, let us see a code that will illustrate creation of namespace. So, we have namespace plants which have a class shrub which has public species as string, public flowering as boolean and public subprint method which prints flowering end sub, end class, end namespace. In the code given, a namespace called plants which has a class called shrub as its member. This class has three members in turn including a procedure print which prints the value of the variable flowering. Assuming that program is saved, we will compile and generate a DLL file out of it. So, option slash t colon library is included with the vbc command to compile a dot vb file to a dll file. More about dll will be discussed in the later sessions. So for this particular code wherein we have a module sub main we create the object toss dim as as new plants dot shrub s dot flowering is true and we print the value of flowering. So as we create an object of type shrub but since shrub is a class in another namespace, we must refer to it as a fully qualified name that is plants.shrub. In the code given, we refer the class shrub using its fully qualified name. This can be avoided with the help of import statement. The import statement is used to import classes and interfaces into a program from other namespaces, thus eliminating the need for fully qualified names. So if you use imports plant, you can say module m submain dim as as new shrub because now we have imported plants in the particular program. And then we assign the value of flowering and we print the value of the flowering. Namespaces contain classes within which variables, functions or procedures are declared. 